In this video, what we're going to be doing is checking out the OBSBOT Teeny2 4K webcam. This thing is special in a couple different ways. First, it actually has a gimbal on it, so you'll be able to move and control it and whatnot, just like this here. And it has AI, so it does tracking. You could do hand movements to zoom and whatnot. It has a really cool feature set. They did reach out to sponsor this product to demonstration, but there are some negatives that you might want to consider that we'll be talking about a little bit later. First and most important, what do you actually get in this box? Well, you do get this snazzy little carrying case that you could put the webcam in. Of course, you actually get the webcam itself. You get a USB type C cable with a USB C to USB adapter, user manual, warranty card. We have this rather snazzy magnetic and adjustable mount. So you can go ahead and pop it onto the back of your monitor. And overall, this carrying case is really handy. It fits in there real nice, looks nice. There's some extra storage room for whatever you may need. And here's the webcam. So if I scroll down here, we can see some more information on the sensors and the uh, frame rates, video formats, and whatnot. It is a 50 megapixel camera with an aperture of 1.9. Has a pretty impressive field of view here, which we'll see in just a moment. If we go down, we can see it supports up to 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. This right here is 4K at either 30, 25, 24, or lower frame rates. But if you did drop it down to 1440 or 1080p, it does support up to 60 frames per second. And that's basically the same depending on the format you actually pick. And all these formats do show up on OBS Studio. We have up to 4X zoom, but has both auto and manual focus. HDR is supported. This is the thing about the two axis gimbal. So if I show it to you real quick, you can kind of see it moving around there. This right here is straight and then it could go all the way, almost looking back, not quite. Same thing the other way. And then it can point all the way up or all the way down. A cool thing about it is when you put it into sleep mode, it will actually face down. So you don't have to pull a Zuckerberg and have a sticker on your uh, webcam. Has some microphone recording. We'll be testing that out. It is a five volt power and these are your system requirements. Linux is not listed here. It technically does work, but there's some quirks and whatnot that I'll talk about in a minute. And of course they have their application. Now we're going to go ahead and demonstrate this product. Let's see how good it actually is. I've already installed the software, upgraded the firmware. So here it is. And then I will bring it in right here. Note the uh, picture in picture that you're seeing now is not yet the webcam. The device is sleeping. It's pointing straight down and you could actually manually interfere with it. So if I lifted it up, that would wake the device. So as you can see, it just woke up. So actually touching it and moving it around isn't gonna negatively impact it. Now to actually see it here, if I go right here to video preview, there it is, there's my video preview. I can see my audio here. I could do some things through here if I would like to. You can see some of my formats. So I have 4K, 1080 and so forth. If I switched it over to 4K, very crisp footage. All right, so there we go. Now without any configuring, you can see the difference between this right here and this camera here. The camera I'm normally recording with is the Canon N50 and this is the Obis Bot 2. Now, a really cool thing and a major selling feature of this camera is the fact that it has motion tracking. So if I go over here under the AI human tracking standard right now is nothing and I have nothing selected. But if I selected motion and I go to normal tracking, then it will begin to track me. So if I were to go back, if I were to stand up go over here, maybe go over here, it is going to follow me around and it's a mechanical mechanism and not a zoom mechanism like you'd see on a uh, Apple's webcams, for example. And of course there are some other features I could do upper body specifically if I would like to, which will focus on that instead of like my head. For some reason, you could do headless tracking if you would like to. Um, I'm not going to think too hard about the specific use case for that, but we'll uh, we'll get out of that real quick. It'll adjust itself right back to kind of standard how it was. Now, of course, there's other options. There's close-up tracking. We have lower body tracking, which again is going to take me down here. Probably not the uh, best view that you guys want to get, but it's going to automatically adjust itself. Now, AI modes, this is really cool. I mentioned the kind of Apple webcams earlier. They have this feature where you can do that desk down view, and this is going to be able to do that for you. So if I go ahead and click on desk mode, it's gonna pause me real quick, and then here we go. This is desk mode. Now, It's I don't have the camera 
necessarily at the best angle. If I'm to tilt this a little bit, it will look much better. And there we go. So this is desk mode and it looks like it's kind of a top down shot here of my keyboard. I could type, I could show you all what's going on. This is my stream deck and I could like pull out my phone or something and use this to actually get a fairly decent shot of something that I want it to look down on. Now, if I click on desk mode again, it's gonna go out of that, eventually maybe pan up. If I enable normal tracking, kind of put myself in there, it will follow me back up to where it needs to be. There's other AI mode things. We have whiteboard, hand, and group. If I do hand, for example, it's going to track your hand. Now it's on my left hand, which is this one. And this is really good. This whole webcam is really good if let's say you're a teacher or something and you're trying to do a presentation, you want it to follow your hands while you point at things. That is a really good use case for it. Now I'm gonna go back into normal tracking. So it kind of sensor, centers me out here. And then of course we have the view and gimbal and our zoom. So I could manually move this around. Let's go ahead and disable a normal tracking, go back to standard. And here I could just kind of play with this and adjust this however I want for a particular shot. There we go. And I could have it automatically center me if I just do normal tracking. It'll kind of figure that out and put me right to where I need to be. And of course we have zoom. So this is the manual zoom. So if I'm to kind of crank this in, you can see it going in on my face and we'll go back out. Now, this is the normal shot. If I click on a wide here, that is where we're at. I could go medium which will bring us in just a little bit, or I could go narrow, which will bring us in about here. Now, of course, that is not it. That's not all we have. We have image over here, so we could change some really specific things about what's going on. And a lot of these options, especially on Linux, are gonna be available to you within OBS. When you're on Windows, you're gonna to wanna to mess with them here and then head over to OBS. So we have the ISO, so how much a light is allowed in. We have our shutter speed. So if I'm at 4K 30, the actual best shutter speed, I believe, would be one over 60. So there we go. That's technically what the best shutter speed is for this resolution. With that, I would want to increase the ISO just a little bit. And we are getting a pretty good picture out of this. If I put it off to the side where this camera currently is, it wouldn't look too far different. Actually, for giggles, let's go ahead and do that. This one will be, the webcam will be a little bit lower. So there we go. Now I can kind of uh, mirror one and switch in between the two. So this right here is the Canon DSLR. And this right here is the webcam. It's still a little uh, kind of washed out a bit. So if I do go and mess with that, first we'll lower the sharpness a bit, make it so you can't see my blackheads as well. We have our white balance here, so I can manually adjust this if I would like to that 6,000 Kelvin. I can make it a little more blue like that. And then if I want to make this a little less green over here, I would then uh, begin messing with the hue. Now for our focus, we have auto. If I disable auto, we have, you can see it's blurry now. So by default, let's get this little guy, see where it's focused at. I mean, right there looks pretty good. And of course I could play with this a little bit if I would like to, so you can see, boom. Now that's almost perfectly focused. And then I can manually focus on my self if I would like to. Right about there looks roughly okay. If I really want to figure out, I'd want to zoom in, focus, zoom out, go through that whole process. But for now, I do not think I'm going to. I am going to move this back though, just like that. Track it on myself real fast and we're looking good. Going to pop auto back on. There we go. And you have global face. So you have a lot of control here. There are some filters. Uh, <laughs> I personally won't be using any of these. The most I ever kind of filter myself is with some uh, color correction. Head, I got a big head. Let's see what, th what this does. Oh, shrink my head. I could turn into a Hasanabi with this filter. I mean, that's, that's kind of cool. If you're real self-conscious about something. Legs, leggy, body slim, I don't know. And then we have like Instagram filters here, if that's your fancy. And if we go to more, we have device sleep, auto sleep after two minutes, and that will automatically kind of point down. So then there's not a chance of like somebody getting into it and seeing your webcam. You can set a custom sleep background if you want to. And here is gesture control. So there's a bunch of different gestures and stuff that you could learn, but the primarily one or the primary one is the locked target. So to turn off and on human tracking, I believe it is this. So now, it will track me. And if I did this again, I'm actually getting some feedback, the light flickers, and then you could see it's no longer tracking me. 
Now, zooming, I believe it's like this. And then if I go like that, look at that. Zooms me in. Super cool stuff. So again, hey, whoa, there we go. So again, that's really good if you're like trying to give like a class presentation, you're really far away from the webcam. And this also offers, where is it? To be quite frank, I haven't used it, but there's a little remote control here that you could get. Here, just for giggles, let's go into our desk mode. You can see this remote, you have options for some of your presets for the zones and other presets. You have this to be able to move around. Right here are some zoom buttons. And then you have other buttons here, such as your track close up and hand tracking. So now normal tracking and it should pick up on my face. There we go. Okay, and I mentioned that there are some cons and the cons are to do with Linux. Cool thing about it is you plug it in, you have all these controls built into OBS. Not so cool thing that uh, I haven't been able to figure out is for some reason, when you do the first connection, it like the gimbal shoots itself up into the side. Uh, you can manually kind of move it back or just grab it and mess with it to put it back where it needs to be. But that's just one thing to consider. Oh, we forgot to do an audio test. So this is our audio recording test. Not wonderful, but, but still pretty good nonetheless. You, if you're going to want to sound really good, you're going to want some sort of microphone. If you're interested in purchasing it, there will be a link down below. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.